cool, yeah, thumbs up. All right, guys, so today uh, we're going to talk about emergencies, uh, specifically at what point do you want to call the vet and what to do while you're waiting. Um, so I'm going to ask you all to open your minds a little bit because uh, we're going to try and put aside some of those old horseman things, possibly. So uh, some of the things that we've all done for years and years, um, you might see and I might say, well, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna update that. Um, so uh, some of the most common emergencies we get called about, uh, and we're going to talk about all of these today. Um, obviously colic, um, eyes, lots of things to do with eyes, uh, choke or esophageal obstruction, lacerations in lots of places, uh, foot, lamenesses, diarrhea, fever, and cough or nasal discharge. So, uh, like I said, two major take-homes today. Uh, when do you pick up that phone to call us? And what do you do while waiting for us to get there? Obviously, some of you guys are closer. We're 15, 20 minutes away. Some of you guys were a little bit further. Um, so if you see that lovely uh, telephone during this uh, talk, that is your sign that that's when you call it. Ah. So, call it. Um, Dr. Peacock already talked about some of our normal parameters. Um, I put them kind of up here again in kind of simpler, easy to remember numbers, you could say. Um, so generally heart rate 30 to 40, respiration rate 10 to 20, temp that 101.5 is that big number that we're really important and worried about. Um, we are going to likely ask this. So like Dr. Peacock was saying, spend the seven or eight dollars on the thermometer, write horse on it. <laughs> <laughs> You think I'm joking. <laughs> um, and she also talks about looking at your horse's mucous membranes. Practice now when it's not an emergency. Pick up that leper lip, see what they look like, push on them. It saves, it gives us so much information on the phone and helps us advise you better and also tells me how fast I have to drive. Um, gut sounds, uh, you know, without a stethoscope, it's hard to say, but if you go, Man, they're like, really, I can hear them from 10 feet away. That gives us information as well. Um, so, some signs. Um, they do vary. Every horse is an individual, and some of them are bigger sissies than others. So, some of the mild ones that are easy to miss and usually come before the more obvious ones that we all think of. Um, so, going off of their food, a lot of them will stop eating their grain before they stop eating their hay. Um, not drinking as much. This is not so much a colic sign as like a little red flag of, hey, if we don't start drinking more, we are going to have a problem. Um, not as much manure in the stall, smaller piles in the stall, uh, dry piles. So like the kind that you can kind of turn into a baseball or something, you know what I mean? Um, just not right. This I hear all the time. You know, it's just... It's just not, something's not right. Parked out. So uh, this is kind of looks like when a male horse is getting ready to urinate. Um, girls can stretch out like this too. Boys stretch out like this, but they don't go to the bathroom. Um, it's a sign of abdominal discomfort. Um, and they'll stretch out, stand normally, stretch out, stand normally. Um, again, those are your mild early signs. Um, your major, more obvious signs. Um, laying down more than usual. So uh, yes, this is a symptom, um, even though they're laying quietly, especially if we've already come out and seen your horse and we tell you if they're laying down, please call us. Please call us. <laughs> um, up and down, obviously, everybody's used to this one. Up and down, rolling, pawing, looking at their sides. Uh, those are all the ones that we all know and recognize. Um, but we want to try and notice the little ones first so that we can do simple things, like I can tell you to help them drink, give you tips to help them drink more, give them salt, things like that, and hopefully avoid either a visit or make it a much more minor visit. Um, so while the obvious ones are absolutely a phone call, the minor ones, give us a call. We can advise you, most likely. Does that make sense? Cool. While you are waiting for us, 
Banamy. Uh, if you haven't already given it when you call, um, which we will ask, uh, you can give it IV or oral. No, 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 do not give it in the muscle. I know it says on the bottle that you can do this. Do not. Uh, it causes what's called clostridial myositis, uh, which is a horrible infection in the muscle and it can be fatal. They do not change the bottle because it will cost them hundreds of thousands of dollars to change the label and they're cheap. Um, so no, I know it says it. I try and cross it out when I give y'all the bottle. Um, hand walking. Yes. Hand walking helps the gut motility, about 10 minutes of it. Anything longer than that, and we kind of call it the death march. Um, don't exhaust your horse, don't dehydrate them. 10 minutes of hand walking, if they're gonna stand quietly, excellent. If they're going to lay quietly, let them be, that's fine. If, if they're trying to throw themselves on the ground and really hurt themselves while you're waiting, you can keep walking if it's safe for you. If it is not safe for you, please do not get hurt. Um, but I have a lot of times had people call and say, I've been walking my horse for two to three hours and they're not better. So all they've done is exhausted the horse and they've dehydrated them more. So again, pick up the phone. I'm gonna say this a lot during this talk, but phone calls are free call and talk to us. And a lot of times we can just give you advice and avoid the visit. Or we're gonna tell you, no, it, it's, we need to come out. So again, pick up the phone, please, please, please. We, all three of us will tell you, we would much rather have you call when it's nothing and, and bother us than wait too long and have it be a bigger thing. Um, so yeah, like I said, laying down, if they're gonna lay quietly while you're waiting for us to come, that's fine. Uh, it's a common misconception that when a horse rolls, that is when they flip their intestine. It is not true. Um, it is the gas in the intestine that does all the flipping. So them rolling, while we don't want them to beat the poo out of themselves, well, maybe we do. Um, <laughs> we don't want them to beat themselves up. If they go and roll once, that, that's not gonna flip them. That's not gonna do any of that. So please don't panic. Um, Food and water, if you're waiting for us, just they can have water, but take away any and all food. Um, and yeah, please call earlier, just call. That is, if there was one thing you take from this, please just pick up the phone. Eyes, anything with an eyeball, call me and be ready to send me a picture. <laughs> um, eyes are always 110% an emergency because eyes go bad in the time it takes to blink, no pun intended. Um, so, I'm not even gonna tell you what to look for because you're calling me. Um, <laughs> while you are waiting, if you have a laceration around the eye, the eyelid, any of those sorts of things, do not cut, touch, or remove anything. People love when you get these little strips to just snip them off. Well, now that horse can't close its eyelid completely. Just leave it, it's okay, it'll be fine. Um, we may instruct you to put a fly mask or something on there to keep them from rubbing it, uh, anything like that. Um, depending on what's going on, when you send me that picture, we may uh, have you give some banamine. Uh, we may um, have you not do anything in the eye. We may have you flush it. Um, uh, we may also have you do none of these things or something totally different. Like I said, eyes are a very big deal. Please call and just, Talk to us and we'll talk you through what we want you to do in the meantime. Choke. Um, so I'm sure, how many people in the room have had to deal with a horse choke? Yeah, so this is obviously one of our really common emergencies. Um, and it's also something that people kind of wonder when they need to call for because a lot of these can resolve on their own um, so I kind of like to break it down between your young healthy horse and your horse that might have some stuff going on. So if your horse is uh, younger, doesn't have any other diseases, no other health issues, no nothing like that, take a deep breath. <laughs> um, watch for about 30 minutes, unless your horse is in severe distress. And very obviously upset by it. The ones that are standing there with the snot rolling out, just give them some time. 
you can all, we'll get to what to do while you wait. Um, if you, there are health concerns, uh, anybody with Cushing's or PPID, horses that are underweight, uh, late teens and older, um, any horses with asthma, COPD, heaves, whatever we're calling it this week, um, or any horse that has choked before, you find it, call. Um, those are the ones we don't wait on. Waiting, banami, only if you can give it IV, because if you shoot it in their mouth, it's not going anywhere. Um, sedation, some of y'all have better pharmacies than I do. Um, ask me, or at least tell me what you've given, because I'm gonna come behind you and give more, so I, I would prefer not to lay your pony down. Uh, but if you have something, odds are I'm gonna let you give something. Um, please, 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 please don't put the hose down their throat. Don't try and syringe them water. Um, and definitely don't do mineral oil. Um, their risk for aspirating during this time, so inhaling whatever you're putting in their mouth and having it go into their lungs is very high. I know, I know you guys are trying to help. This is not gonna help, um, unfortunately. Um, if they want to drink, by all means, they can drink. Um, but don't try to force anything in. Um, you can massage their throat, uh, especially if you can feel it. Um, you can walk them. Um, a lot of times, again, that movement helps them kind of, one, relax a little bit. Uh, and then along with the massaging, can help it move down. Please take away their food. I know it seems like a joke. There are a lot of really dumb horses who will choke and keep eating. <laughs> and then they'll clear, and then they'll keep eating and choke again. So please take away the food. I know it sounds like all your horses are really dumb, but they're, they try to wake up and die every day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, lacerations. Um, so the important thing about lacerations, location, location, location. Um, appearances are deceiving. Um, and a lot of this is, this is why we go to vet school. Um, because their anatomy is so important about knowing if this is a big deal or not. Um, I know Dr. Peacock has had several times that people have sent her things that like, oh, it's just a tiny little thing. Nope, that one's in the joint. That's going to NC State. That's coming here to stay for perfusions and things like that. Uh, something that's in a synovial structure AKA a, a joint, a tendon sheath, something like that, is extremely serious. Um, so, as I was saying, uh, appearances are deceiving. Take temperature. If we already have a fever and you found that laceration, we're already much more concerned. Um, send us a picture. Another common theme here, um, especially if when your horse is painful, they're not gonna let you kind of poke around a whole lot. So you go, I, I think maybe there's a joint here. Um, you can't touch it. You can't see it well because there's a lot of hair. Um, all those things, sending us a picture will help us know because we know where a lot of those synovial structures end because it's surprising usually um, how far they go. Um, so a phone call, um, anything that could be a possible puncture so if you think it goes more than just like a little abrasion, um, the best way to describe if it needs sutures, if you can make the edges of the wound talk. So if you have, and I tried to find a way to make a video for this, but I wasn't, I didn't get a laceration between now and then. Um, if you have your two edges, so say that this is your laceration, and you can push on the edges and it goes boop, boop, and it looks like a mouth talking. Um, that was a terrible example, but, <laughs> um, oh, and I covered up my last one. Oh, yeah, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> that's a little important. <laughs> Maybe should have been at the top, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, Anything that is anywhere near a joint. So this one, obviously, I know you guys know a lot of where the joints are, um, but some of those ones, like I said, are in tricky places, um, hence the picture. Uh, if your horse is lame from the laceration, always a phone call. And then, yeah, bleeding, <laughs> um, which we're gonna talk about more here. 
So uh, while you're waiting, um, preferably if you can and it's safe, get your horse somewhere safe to work with some good light. Again, if possible. We have headlights, don't worry. Um, if there's bleeding, um, pressure wrap um, with kind of whatever you got. Um, if it's where there's tendons and ligaments, like our distal limb, so below the knee or below the hock, do be cautious with your pressure wrap. Um, just make sure it's uniform and you're not putting a whole lot of tension on the back of that wrap around the back of those tendons and ligaments. Um, if you have a bleed that is something very serious and it, you're finding that you are bleeding through your wraps, don't take off your wrap to put a new one on. Just keep adding on top. Keep adding pressure that way. Because um, every time you take that wrap off, you're going to redisturb whatever clot is attempting to form. Um, please don't place a term kit. Uh, yeah. Uh, for an object in a leg, chest, whatever, please do not remove it. It's stopping the bleeding. Um, I'm sure there's 8 million TikTok videos for humans about if someone stabs you, please leave it in. Same thing. Um, cleaning. Um, I'm okay with you guys doing some, just be cautious, because sometimes, depending on what the wound looks like, debris can get pushed in deeper. Um, so I'll let you make a bit of a judgment call on there. Um, medications, uh, giving antibiotics, anti-inflammatories, all those things. Uh, we'll talk about it on the phone, because you're calling. <laughs> um, and now, <laughs> I made a video. <laughs> uh, we'll see if it works. And uh, I apologize for my dog. <laughs> Um, one of the really common uh, emergency do's and don'ts we run into uh, are some of the bandages that we see uh, put on horses. So I'm really quickly just going to show you some common things that we see that uh, are no-nos and just quick ways that we can make them miss. Yes, um, this is my own horse behind us. I was working on her a minute ago. She's a little sleepy, so don't mind her. Um, but first I'll see what comes in, shows you what come in uh, that we don't like to see. Very commonly, uh, what comes in is just uh, a thin sort of pad uh, and vet wrap, literally uh, on the leg. So, and there will be pictures of this on the slide. So it'll literally be put on anywhere. So we can say that she's got it cut like this. this because uh, this is far too tight and constricting on this part of the leg. We have uh, sensitive structures here uh, and horses moving around can cause a lot of damage. This is a guaranteed bandage bow. It's not going to provide enough protection. Uh, it's not something we want to see. Um, if you're going to do this or want to put something on here, Your little pad or whatever is absolutely fine and perfect, um, but you're going to put it on uh, with something soft. Um, so you can get anything like this, uh, stretch gauze, brown gauze, anything like that at CVS, Walmart, any of those pharmacies and keep it in an emergency kit. There are some in yours if you've pre-ordered. You can apply your pad, use your soft, Keep it on and you just lay it on. This does not constrict. And my dog's gonna join the camera. Easy Tori. You have a more appropriate fitting pad. And this would go over it. And then you can apply your vet wrap. So um, and it doesn't have to be a vet wrap at this point. You know, you can just have a standing wrap if you want it. Um, you can also, if it's a really bloody bandage, you can have, uh, you know, like disposable material and then your vet wrap. Uh, but with this, for my compression, I now have something underneath that's protecting. Uh, and we're not going to be prone to as much of a bandage bow. 
Uh, I'm not going to damage anything underneath, and the leg is protected, covered, and my wound is covered as well. So, um, if you guys have any questions, I'm happy to talk more about bandages at the end uh, and show you some more examples. Uh, so, the one on the left, what I would love to see, and the one on the right, please don't. Um, so, like I said in the video, um, the one on the right is creating a lot of pressure points um, and uh, is going to damage that leg while you're attempting to let something heal. Okay, uh, the foot. Um, reasons to call. Uh, for an object. Um, so, a lot of us have heard about like a street nail, nails in the foot, being at the bottom of the foot, the coronary band, anywhere down there. Um, blood. Usually we don't see a lot of blood coming from the foot, so if you do, it's a good reason to call. Non-weight bearing. Anything that's non-weight bearing, um, this could fit under lameness as well. Um, so being unwilling to walk, so bearing weight but not wanting to walk, either on one foot or seeing this rocked back or walking on eggshells appearance. I'm sure that's, those are some triggering words for some of you. Um, this is what I'm talking about with the rock back stance. Um, or coronary band involvement. Like say you have a, a laceration and the coronary band is involved. You should be calling anyway because it's a laceration near a joint. Um, so while you're waiting, um, generally don't remove the object. Uh, we're going to obviously have talked on the phone because you called. Um, it's nice if you leave it in because it lets us see exactly where it was and where it went. Um, so when we take x-rays, we have a better idea of if we're going near structures that are important. There can be caveats to this. If you send me a picture and it's so big or so large or in a place that if the horse moves, it's going to do more damage, I'll ask you to pull it. Um, like I said, limit movement. Uh, ask the vet if you should stay where you are or if you can go to the stall or run. Um, and again, ask before giving any anti-inflammatories because you might uh, impair our exam. So if you tell me that the horse can't bear any weight on that leg and then you give it two grams of butte and I get there half an hour to an hour later and the horse is walking fine, it's, it's just hard to now interpret what I'm looking at. So just talk to me about it. Uh, lameness in general. Uh, anything with any significant swelling or heat is a phone call. Um, and then obviously some familiar things that we kind of just talked about with the foot. Um, Non-weight bearing, again, or an unwillingness to walk. Um, so some of these things that we're talking about, we're worried about fractures, we're worried about an acute laminitic flare, uh, and probably a cellulitis are your biggest ones, along with the hoof abscess. Um, again, while waiting, ask before giving those NSAIDs, because uh, you are going to essentially make it impossible for us to do a, a fair exam for you. Try and limit the movement. Um, if swollen, we'll probably tell you you can cold hose or ice it. If non-weight bearing, we usually really try and not have you put it in a trailer um, if we have not ruled out a fracture. Um, obviously, this is not always the perfect case. We do the best we can. Because if there is a fracture that is what we call non-displaced, so still put together nicely, and your horse goes in the trailer, um, they have a much higher risk for then displacing it. So having it move apart and then be more difficult to have heal. So we will talk about it and we will do the best we can to not have to have you put your horse in the trailer. Sometimes it's unavoidable. Diarrhea. Um, yes, so uh, diarrhea, some important differences. Uh, and kind of the differences between a phone call. But please, again, just call. Just call, phone call's free. Um, so, uh, people often call saying that their horse is having formed manure and then passing liquid afterwards. Totally different and not technically diarrhea. A problem that we should address and we should talk about on an appointment basis. Um, and then your next two are what we call cow patty and pipe stream. Cow patty is literally, if you walked in the cow field, what you would see. Pipe stream is what you see in this picture. Um, and it is literally that, a stream on the wall. Um, 
how do you kind of tell if your horse is having true diarrhea? And technically, this one makes it kind of difficult though. Um, is it in the tail? Is it down the legs? My next questions are gonna be, is the horse eating and drinking still? And always, does the horse have a fever? This is gonna be huge. Please, 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 please check the temperature, especially before giving any banamine. Yeah, and Melissa said, please wear gloves. Um, a lot, no, um, quite, it is, it, uh, there are numerous uh, bacterial and other causes for diarrhea that you can get from your horse. Then they're done that, it's not fun. Um, so diarrhea, while you're waiting, if you have any of these things, a fever, it's pipe stream diarrhea, they're not eating or drinking well, we are likely going to refer you to Virginia Tech or NC State because we do not have isolation possibilities here. Because um, like I just said, they're what we call zoonotic. You can give, your horse can give it to us, your horse can give it to other horses. So we don't have a place to keep them here to keep it from the other horses who come through the clinic. Um, so yeah, now uh, if, again, depending on how bad some of these things are. We can see you on your farm and give medications there. As long as your horse stays comfortable, is eating and drinking, we can control the fever, and we start seeing improvements. Um, those things we can still keep treating. Um, but just know that, unfortunately, if they need IV fluids, if they're getting uncomfortable because they're just so crampy from the amount of manure they're passing, they can't come here. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, again, yeah, try, try to hold off on giving anything until you talk to us. Um, I know some people start to see loose manure and they start a probiotic. That's okay. Um, but try and avoid anything bigger than that. <coughs> uh, fever. So, uh, we're going to break it down kind of temperature wise. Uh, 101 or higher. I know on my own horse, I start kind of looking sideways at them. Um, so 101 or higher can be depending on conditions. Did your horse just finish exercising in, you know, the 85, 90 degree heat with the high humidity? Did they just finish a long ride in a trailer? Is it the middle of summer? Are they super stressed out at a show? You know, um, those sorts of things. Um, if you have that 101, do the regular cooling things, hose them off, uh, alcohol bath, see if that temperature comes down, but monitor. Um, 101.5 or higher. Uh, this is a phone call. Um, again, cannot hospitalize it here because we do not have isolation. Uh, fever means infection uh, most of the time. Um, and we don't want everybody else's horse getting sick. So uh, while we apologize, it is to protect everybody else. Um, again, we are more than happy to come out to you and depending on blood work, what we find, how sick your horse is, that may be a referral to a vet school. Um, again, uh, how severe it is and what you do, it's going to depend on if your horse continues to eat or drink. Um, that is a very common complaint that people call, like Dr. Peacock said earlier, they think they're colicking, they're not eating, Ooh, fever 1024. Big, big reason horses stop eating. Um, does it respond to banamine? Uh, a fever that does not respond to anti-inflammatories is much more serious than a fever that does respond. Um, and what other symptoms do you have? There's usually something else with a fever. Snotty nose, cough, diarrhea, swollen leg, something. Um, so we have to find out what that other thing is. Again, while we're waiting, um, find out how much banamine we want you to give if you have it and if you haven't already given it. Um, try and keep your horse confined to one area on your property, uh, especially if you're a boarding facility or you have other horses, uh, because if, you know, in three or four hours they're going to break with diarrhea, you don't want them to have spread that all over the property. Um, also not a bad idea to start checking temperatures of everybody else on the property. Um, if it's going to be something respiratory, something diarrhea, you may catch the other guys early. 